Okay, when you're assembling your motor, I do not recommend dipping your pistons in oil as some people do, but I do recommend dipping your lifters in a little bit of oil and use some cam guard on the flat part where it makes contact with the cam lobe. Then dip your lifter and just make sure it slides easily into the lifter bore. And repeat that for all the lifters. All right, next, you should, all your push rods should be clean and straight. Uh, make sure you blow them off and blow them out. That's oil passages in here. Make sure everything is clean and lint free and ready to install. And lastly, make sure you use some assembly lube on both ends of your push rods before you drop them down into the guide holes. All right, make sure that your push rods are through the proper guide holes and centered on your lifters. If you have the intake manifold on and you're working in the car, you can usually feel it. Just be very careful or use a flashlight to look down inside to make sure that they're lined up properly. All right, now we're going to install the rocker arms. These particular rocker arms are called full roller rockers and that's because the end of the rocker arm here actually has bearings in it and it spins it rolls the middle part also has bearings in it it spins and it rolls as opposed to a stamped steel rocker make sure that when you install the roller rockers there's a flat side and a non-flat side that goes over the stud Make sure you have the flat side facing up when you install the rockers on the rocker arm studs like so. And you also want to make sure that you have assembly lube on the tops of the valve stems like that. Same with the push rods. And make sure that it's completely soaked in oil before you put it on. Make sure you get all the bearings lubed up and soak it in oil like you did with the lifters. All right, so when installing these full roller rockers, um, you got your little lock nuts here, and they've got this little center locking stud inside. Use an Allen wrench and back that guy out so it's sticking out a little ways. You don't want that bottoming out while you're trying to adjust the rockers. And you just get those guys all started like so. Once you have all of your locking nuts put on and twisted down, just finger tight like so then you can start adjusting the rockers so you can see as we turn our engine over in the proper clockwise manner we're looking back here and this exhaust valve is starting to move down alright as we turned our engine over by hand our exhaust valve started to move down and just as it starts to move down we're gonna in adjust our intake and you can see the wobble, you can see the gap in the space in there, and that's what we're adjusting when we adjust the rockers. Okay, when it comes to adjusting rockers on a small block Chevrolet, everyone has their own system and their own technique. Here's the technique that I prefer, just makes it easy, and you can't get lost. So, here you have your exhaust rocker and valve over your exhaust port, your intake is going to be over your intake port so you're going to adjust the intake valve or intake rocker when the exhaust valve just begins to open or the exhaust rocker just starts to move down as soon as this starts to move down that's when we adjust this so we turn our engine over by hand or with the bumper switch and as soon as that valve starts to move in a downward position the exhaust moves down I always use the phrase blow me down kind of like Popeye just helps me to remember you can come up with your own saying but I just use blow me down to remember that so as soon as the exhaust starts to move down we can adjust our intake this slack right here is what we want to get rid of you only have slack like that if you have a solid lifter cam and then there's measurements to be done with the feeler gauge but we're not doing that we are adjusting a hydraulic lifter camshaft right now so on a hydraulic lifter on a small block Chevy the exhaust valve just starts to move down and we adjust our intake 
and we get rid of that slack by turning our adjusting nut just finger tight until that slack disappears. There may be some sideways wobble, but you just want to get zero movement up and down like so. That's called zero lash. Once you achieve zero lash, you can use a socket or a wrench on your adjusting nut and you're going to turn that one half to three quarters of a turn past zero lash. Once you do that on your locking nut, you're going to tighten down the locking stud on the inside of your locking nut. Okay, once you've adjusted your rocker, you've adjusted your adjusting nut, and you've tightened down your locking stud in the middle, use a sharpie and just mark the block so you know that you've adjusted this rocker already. Then you can move on. Okay, now we're ready to adjust the exhaust valve on our small block. The exhaust valve here is lined up with our exhaust port, and this is just the opposite of adjusting the intake. Here's our intake rocker. You can see the valve is already pushed down and opened up. So when this intake begins to move back up, that's when we adjust our exhaust. So just as the intake starts to move upwards, we're in position to adjust our exhaust. You can see the slack right here. It moves up and down a little bit. Tighten our adjusting nut just to get rid of that zero lash. We don't want to go past that. We just want to zero that out. So you can see if we back it up, there's slack, turn it by hand, and as soon as that stops, it'll move sideways left and right, but we want to get zero movement up and down. That's called zero lash. Once we're at zero lash, we use our wrench or our socket, put it on our adjusting nut, and we turn that one half to three quarters of a turn past zero. The next thing you need to do on locking nuts is you need to use your Allen wrench and tighten down the stud in the middle that locks this nut into place. Once that's all locked down and everything's adjusted, use your Sharpie, mark the block so you know that you've adjusted that rocker already and you're ready to move on to the next one. Okay, once we've finished adjusting all of our rockers and we've squirted a little paint on the block, make it look pretty, we have finished our 383 Stroker Chevy Long Block. This is a long block because it's got the heads on it assembled. And we're ready to do the touch-up stuff before we put it in. After you've finished assembling your long block, you may want to go around and mark your water ports and open oil line ports with some model paint or some liquid paper. Just remind you or whoever's putting the engine in that they need to put something in there to plug those holes, whether it's a gauge or just a plug. There are a couple things we want to do when installing or replacing a timing cover, especially a chromy one and it doesn't matter if it's a chromy timing cover or oil pan or valve covers process is the same. Number one is we need this clean so we've wiped it down a little bit and we've popped out our front main seal and we're going to replace that but the first thing we want to do is after we clean it like this get the seal out because we want to get all the shiny stuff. This is the problem area here. Anything shiny chrome is not going to stick and not going to seal so the inside of here where the seal goes and on the back side all of this where the gasket goes needs to be buffed down so that it sticks and seals okay so what we want to do is we want to take our scotch bright pad on our die grinder and we want to buff this area here so that it just gets rid of the glossy shiny part Okay, so what we've done, we've used our scratch bright pad on our die grinder and we've just taken off the real shiny, smooth surface <clears throat> on our gasket mating surface because anything that's chrome plated and has a smooth surface will not seal 
well at all. So you need to make sure you rough up the mating gasket surfaces. Doesn't matter if it's a timing cover or valve cover or oil pan. It's very important to do that with anything chrome before you seal it up. Okay, on the front side of our chromey timing cover, we need to prep this surface right in here before we install our new front crank seal. We're going to do that with a die grinder and a wire brush. We're going to just get inside here and just buff it a little bit. We're not going to grind it all the way down, but just get rid of this smooth, chromey surface. That should do it. We don't want to take off too much chrome. We just want to scuff the shiny surface a little bit so that our Loctite and our seal will keep the oil in. Another thing we want to do before we install our timing cover is we want to clean out this area here where the front pan seal goes. You can see there's still a little bit of leftover silicone on there and it's still kind of shiny from the chrome plating. So what we want to do is we want to get all this silicone leftover goo off of here. We also want to buff this shiny surface so that our new seal will stick better. We're going to use just a wire wheel and our die grinder. Go through here, clean that off. Just scuff it enough so that it'll stick. We don't want to grind it all the way down. Another thing we need to do with our timing cover is these holes here where the bolts go to hold it on. Once they're tightened up, they tend to warp a little bit. So where all these little holes are where the bolts go through, whether it's a timing cover or it's a valve cover or an oil pan, what you want to do is you want to put this lip on a flat surface, a block or a vise, and you just want to tap these holes down just a little bit just to straighten them out. When you look at them, you'll see when they're pushed through a little bit and they're a little bit wobbled out. So what you want to do is flatten all those holes out so we get a good bite and a good gasket seal. After you've cleaned all your surfaces on your timing cover, make sure you use a good solid bead of Loctite on your main seal before you install it. Before you install your seal, make sure you've got a good support on the actual seal surface on the timing cover before you put your seal in and get it mounted. You can use a short piece of 2x4 or 4x4 on your seal to make sure you drive it in and tap it in with the hammer evenly. After you tap in your seal, make sure that it's even all the way around. You should see just a little bit of your Loctite in the seal area. You know that sucker is sealed tight and it's not going to leak. We're sick and tired of these four walls Our institution has become our prison halls But in the classrooms, switch blades to the sky We're sick and tired of these four walls Our institution has become our prison halls but